Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today is the next step in our Christmas in July 2023 project where I'm making the Festive Friends from Cool Crafting as our Christmas in July. We've already made Florin here and we're, today we're going to move on to Mary and her lovely dress. So if you remember in one of the earlier parts, parts one and two I think it was, we made the three um, main sort of bunnies and this one is is my Mary I chose her because I think she's got the sweetest face so that's going to be the one that we're dressing today so what I've gone is done is I've found my little baggie that we put the pattern pieces in when we traced these so these have all been traced from the pattern and you can get your supplies for the pattern and also a kit for all of the fabrics that we're going to use for making all three of the figures from Cool Crafting, who is a, um, a craft supply company in the UK, and their owner is Sarah Peel, and Sarah Peel is the designer of everything Luna Lapin. So I'm not connected with um, with um, Cool Crafting in any way. I'm just like you. I just like the characters and like making the kits. Um, and in this case, in actual fact, so did Anne Haldeos, who is actually our sponsor for this kit and for this tutorial. And Anne has sponsored the purchase of the kit, and therefore she's that means that she's also sponsored the um, tutorials and I know that Anne is sewing along with me so I hope that you already start sewing your merry outfit as well Anne so thank you very much on behalf of both myself and anybody else who watches these videos and um, we really want to say a really big thank you to Anne for her generosity and her support um, so yeah so it get so have your pattern your kit the, the sheets of pattern and I've traced those off um, already and put them into my baggie and we covered this in the first section when we were talking all about the project because I think it's nice to have everything all ready to start when you come to want to do your characters. In here as well you'll spot that we've got the faux fur trim that we've already traced off um, and cut out ready for the bottom of the skirt and I cut that out first before I started making Florin's outfit, making me think of the fur on my face already, um, because I wanted to make sure that I got one long continuous strip for, for Mary's skirt because the faux fur goes along the bottom of her skirt just along here and I want that to be in one long continuous strip so I have that the other thing is that this is the fabric that came in my kit for Mary's outfit with these little silver stars and that's really very nice and very sweet but I knew that I'd also always got this um, fabric and I don't know if you can pick up um, there's a slight sheen and, and glitter on this fabric um, and this is the one that I wanted to make. So I'm just have a look at what this one is. So it's a basic grey grunge for Moda, um, but it's got it's pattern number 30150, if that's the one, if you wanted to make the same as me. Let me just hold this up for you so that you can see. And on the salvage edge, it just says basic grey um, Moda for grunge. And then it's got the number there as well on there. Um, but I think that this is uh, going to be really pretty for that lovely, delicate... Um, dress of hers and it's just a preference so if you're happy with the stars then stick with the stars but we did have this conversation when we first started because if you're not keen on any of the fabrics that came in the kit obviously if you don't like the whole fabrics then you, then you need to think of something else to do but for me the majority of the fabrics in the kit I really really liked it was just this one that I wasn't so sure about and I'm sure it'll look lovely if you if you like it but for me I just wanted to make this one so so just remember that you're going to have these characters around for such a long time that if you're not sure about any of the fabrics it's perfectly fine just to swap them out so as long as you swap them out like for likes this is a quilting cotton and this is a quilting cotton then everything's all good and you swap boucle for boucle or felt for felt then that's all fine the only thing is if you wanted to swap say like um, a boucle for felt um, then you just need to be aware of the finishing techniques on there and, and the different size of the fabric just to make sure that your um, instructions are going to get the finish that you want at the very end. So for me, that's all, all the change that I'm going Well, There is one smaller change later, but I can't tell you that one yet because I'm waiting for something to arrive in the post. But we'll get to that, I'm sure, at some stage. So grab your pattern, grab your fabric, and I'll turn the camera down and we'll get started. Now, one of the problems we are going to have is with lighting for this project because everything's all white and so I'm going to do my very best to show you what we need to do with this um, with this stage for this outfit but because it's all white it's really difficult for me to get the lighting just right. I've got my overhead light on, I haven't got any more spotlights on um, and then we'll just have to just work with it and see how we get on but I will try to be mindful of that as we're working through. 
So I've been through my fabric. I have my fabric now for my dress. I've also pulled out the white piece of felt as well that was in there, which I believe is for her wings. And I've also pulled out the piece of fabric, which is the interfacing as well, which I believe is also for her wings. But the wings I'm going to do on a separate video um, because we'll do that just as a, as a separate one. Today is just going to be the dress um, and with the fur trim on the bottom. So we'll be working on that. So let's have a look at our pattern pieces. Let's open up our little baggie and get our pattern pieces out. That's our fur trim. We'll need that later. So we're pulling out the um, front and the lining of the dress. We're also pulling out the upper skirt tier. I've got the back of the bodice for the dress. I'll do a halo when I do her wings, because that will all kind of go together, won't it? I've got the lower skirt tier, and then I've got her sleeve as well. So those are the things that I've got. So let's put on her wing and other pattern pieces back in, in the little bag, ready for another day. And I'll put the felt and the interfacing in there. And just to keep my fur, um, faux fur nice and neat as well, I'm just gonna put that back in the bag just so that we've got that for later. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is have a look at our pattern pieces and just work out where we're working with these. So we've got our front. Now the bodice is actually lined on this dress, which is, a, I'm really happy with that because that's a lovely finish that I really like to see. So the front and the back, we're actually going to cut out um, twice. I'm going to use a separate fabric um, that's just a, a cheaper cotton fabric for my lining fabric, just for the two bodice pieces. And then the top I'm going to cut out in my sparkly. Um, it might look similar to you up for the camera. And then the two skirts, are uh, tears, are both cut on the fold because I've got the um, arrow that shows down with the um, point into the edge and it says fold next to it on the pattern. So we know that those two are going to be cut on the fold. So we need to take that into account when we're working with our fabric. And then we've got our sleeve pattern as well and we need to cut two of those. The sleeves won't be lined. I don't ever line sleeves and, and they aren't lined in the pattern. So the next thing that we're going to do then is get our ooh, lost piece of pattern piece already. It's on the floor. I'll pick that up in a minute. Is we're going to get our pressing mat out and I'm going to press this fabric and just make sure that that's all nice and neat. And that will just take out these really big, deep creases that we've got in the fabric and just make this perfect for us to be able to um, work with it. So I'll just pop off and just iron that and then come back to you. And if you do the same and then we'll be ready to talk about how to line this fabric up so that we can get as much out of it as possible. So I'm just going to, um, before we start pinning and cutting, I've had a look at the instructions and inside your book you'll have a layout for the pattern pieces just here. And I was just having a look at that because the way that my fabric is folded, I don't unless they folded it, no. So, so the, the, it's right, I'm, I'm thinking as I'm talking and it's not always a good thing. So the pattern, the fabric piece that I've got is probably a quarter of a quarter of a metre, and it's by the width of the fabric. So that is, is well, just over thirty centimetres wide. This is so it's about a third of a metre, isn't it? <clears throat> and the the thing is, when I look at the pattern in the book, it does say here double thickness. Oh, so I wonder if they folded it in half that way. Right, okay. So. I'm trying to I'm trying to work through with the with the patternist the way that they've got it just so I can understand it. So because you've got this long thin piece of fabric so that's on the double at the moment, and if you put the salvage edges together because we want to get this all straight of grain, what I think that they've actually done in the Sarah in the book the designer has folded it in half so you've got your salvages together, but then I think that she's folded it over again so that you've then put your salvage edges to your folded edge. Can you see that? So when you actually look on the end, you've got actually got four bits of fabric there. So that's the way that I think that Sarah has then folded it in order to get this right. So when she says double thickness in the top corner, in actual fact, it's quadruple thickness because you've got four layers there. Because what we need to do is when we cut out the skirt, we want to have, we've got to cut two, and so by laying the pattern piece onto the fabric, when it's quadrupled, we'll get both two cut out at the same time. It is a massive waste of fabric though. Look at all of this that we've got wasted here. Because then when we sew the sleeves, we don't need quadruple of the sleeves, we only need that to go through, through one. 
and the dress, we don't need four of each of those. So I'm a, I'm a bit unsure as to why we've done it that way. Absolutely, with the skirt, I can understand it. But the way that I would... Oh, I keep losing my pattern pieces. The way that I'm going to do it, I think, is I'm going to make a fold here that's just enough to be, to be for the skirt. And I'm working on the stars fabric, but this is because that was what was sent with the kit. And I'm just going to pin it. I'm not actually going to cut mine out of this. So I would have one there. And then the second one further down. I'll get the pattern piece in a second. Because then we can then cut out our bodice pieces with that. And we'll only get those in, in, in the twos that we need and it's gonna preserve a whole load more fabric. So let me just work out how I'm going to do this to make this right, because I kinda of want to keep that intact and cut those out of this side and then possibly out of the other. I'm confusing you, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to cut it exactly the same as the way in the book and you're not bothered about preserving any of the extra fabric, please do so, that's fine. And if you want to, if you want to just get your head around that, what she'd done is put the two salvage edges together like that. So it gives one folded edge at the bottom there. And then when she's laid it down, she's put the salvage edges across to the fold and then pattern pieces are then going onto there and that'll give you the right amount to cut that out. And you'll have excess, but it'll work perfectly well. So that's the way that you can do it. What I'll do is I'll work out how I'm gonna do mine and I'll take a quick snapshot for you and just sort of show you that so that I'm not confusing you. Because the other thing is I want to cut my um, lining fabric out of a different one so that it's, it's um, I'm not using my top fabric all the time. Okay, I'll stop waffling, back in a minute. Okay, I've just worked out what I would do if I was working with this piece of fabric, um, as I say. What I've done is I've got a fold at this end of 20 centimetres, okay? So I've got one fold at one raw, a selvage edge. So I've brought a selvage edge in towards the centre by 20 centimetres. That gives me a fold along this edge just here. And I've placed my two skirt pieces against here with the lower skirt at the top. I know that's a contradiction, but the, the larger skirt piece at the top and then the smaller one just further down. And then underneath that, there's enough room to put the sleeve and the back bodice side by side. Now, I can't fit the front on, but don't worry about that at this moment in time. So that will then cut me out my um, lower skirt, my upper skirt both once, both of my sleeves, because I only need two of those, and it'll cut out one side of my back. Um, well, it's cut out, but it's, it's cutting out two, but it depends if you're using a lining or not. So it'll either cut out the, the back pieces for the upper or the back pieces for the lining, whichever you're using. I've then gone across to the other side of my fabric, and I've also folded in from the selvage edge 20 centimetres. So this here is just over 20 centimetres. I can just take that out slightly because I don't want to waste anything if I can help it. Yeah, it's about 20 centimetres. Because then what we can do is, if we then fold, it's going to sound a bit confusing, but I want to put this folded edge to the folded edge at the other end. So if we then just fold this in, and put that folded edge together. And this might be too confusing for you, and if it is, just, just jump ahead. But if you like to preserve your fabric, then this is the way that I would do it. And then once you've got those two folded edges together here, make sure they're absolutely right on top of each other. And then I would then repin my skirt through each of those. And that will give me my two skirts cut on the double. Oops, the pin doesn't want to go through. Just give it a twist if it doesn't. So it's give me my two upper skirts and my two lower skirts. And I would cut those out first because then that gives me all of this fabric down here and where the sleeve is, I could then lay my front and lining and I would get, because I've already cut those ones out and it would give me a, a gap underneath then to cut out my front and my lining on there or you only need one of those and my second back piece if you're using the same fabric for your lining. And that would give you if I can just open this out, well it gives you all of this twice 
because that piece there that's just single up to where your 20 centimeters is is completely flat and that's a really good usable other piece of fabric rather than these smaller bits of fabric just here so that's what i would do if it was if i was using this piece of fabric my piece of fabric is half a meter so it's bigger so i'm not going to follow that i'm just going to cut mine out but it, there's no grain lines on any of these pattern pieces try and get them as straight as you can onto your fabric um, well, before you start cutting those out um, and then you're going to cut out and make sure you've got two cut on the fold of your lower um, skirt two cut on the fold of your upper you only need two of your um, sleeve so you only need to cut through one thickness of the double for your sleeve and then you're back in your lining you can either fold, put that up if you wanted to put it up here it will just fit up next to the lower skirt on there and then again it gives you that lower piece then to cut out your sleeves and then on the piece underneath you can cut out your lining but cut those pieces out and then that will give you this piece of fabric you can just work with. Okay I hope that makes sense if not follow this cutting layout layout in the book and I'm going to come back to you once I've cut out all of the pieces out of my fabric and my lining fabric and then we'll be ready to start. Okay, so after that confusing start to the cutting out, let's just get all of our notches in place and just make sure we've got everything where we want it to be and that we've got enough things. Let's start with the sleeves first and then with your snips, we're just going to mark these little notches here and we're literally going to take our, our sharp bladed scissors and we're just going to put a little snip at a right angle to the cut edge that just on top of each of those notches and you've got two to mark the back of the sleeve one to mark the centre, um, centre top the sleeve cap, and then one to mark the front. So literally they're just a couple of little millimetres through that when you spread the fabric you can see it. So we're also going to lay these out as well now, just to make sure we've got a pattern count as well, to make sure that we're right. So this, for the sleeves, we need to cut two, and there we've got our two pieces. If I stagger them like that with the pattern piece, hopefully you can see those. So let's go next on to the um, skirt tiers, and I cut mine out separately, so I'm just going to stack those on top, you might have cut yours at four, and I'm just going to decide which is my top, and I'm just going to put a little um, snip at the centre front, just exactly the same way, and in actual fact I'm actually going to do a centre front as well at the bottom as well, so just a couple of um, millimetres into that fabric just to give that. So then we've got two that have been cut on the folds. So that gives these nice long rectangles. And that's our pattern piece for that one. Okay, so two sleeves, two upper tiers. Let's do our bottom tiers next. Again, get those to stack on top of each other so you've got those marked. And again, well, I'm just going to mark the top of these. You don't need to mark on the hem edge. So just where that fold is, I'm just putting a little notch in there to mark those. And then we can fold these out and you'll see that we've got these lovely long pieces of skirt which when they're put into a round is going to make this as a lovely full skirt so that's the two upper tiers let's work this one here so i've got my back and my lining so i've got one cut on the fold so i'm just going to mark the little notch that's in the arm side just for the front just to mark that and that's my lining and then on my bodice front I'm just going to just do the same on the sleeve so if I put the pattern my fabric piece in half and I can just match that on or if you're wanting to you can just open that out match up your underarm and the top of your shoulder and then you can just put your little snip in just to mark your notch just there so I've got my lining and my top piece and I've got my pattern piece there so that's all present and correct and then on the back here and um, this is all just picking cut out together so I can mark the two snips for my uh, in this arm side and there's one little snip at the top here and there's one little snip at the bottom here so we've got those all marked so if we open these out we've got two in the upper fabric a left and a right because we cut them on the double so we've automatically got our left and right and then we've got our two lining pieces again 
left and right, cut on the double, and there's our pattern piece. So I'm happy that we've got everything we need here. So hopefully you've been counting along with me and you've got everything you need as well. So that's all good. I'm put my pins out of the way. I'm gonna stack all these pattern pieces up together again now and just put one pin in just to secure them together so that I know I've got them, um, I've got my pattern piece onto my fabric. So that just makes it easier when we're working with it all later. And it's easy on these to say to tell the top the, the top and the bottom, so that's fine with those. Pattern piece on here, and then we'll be ready. I'll get my sewing machine up and we'll be ready to get started. It's exciting, isn't it? Okay, so first thing we're going to be working with is our bodice pieces. So if you want to find those and you need your lining and your outer fabric. Let's take the pattern piece off those. So we've already got our notches cut on those. I'll separate mine out into my lining and out into my top fabric. Okay, so if we take the top pieces of fabric first, what we're going to do is on the... I need to find so that you can see. Is we have our neckline in the centre here. And what we want to do is put one long straight edge so that that goes into the middle of the bodice. And then you're going to put a pin in or two just to hold that in place on top of the shoulder because we're going to sew the shoulder seams together first. So there we've got the sparkly of the outer fabric. And then I'm putting it right side down so that right sides are together and then matching up the shoulder seam just here. And we're going to sew that first because then we're going to take the other one and then put that one across and we're going to sew that one as well. So we can do a little bit of chain piecing on these, can't we? Just make sure that you've got them all lined up so that the angles are all the same. It's going to make it all fit nicely. Okay, so over to your machine and I've got this on a, just a straight stitch, 2.2 construction, construction stitch length. Um, and I'm using going to move my needle across to the left so that I get my quarter of an inch seam allowance and I know that if I put my needle across to position number seven I can use the edge of my presser foot so you need to just adjust yours as needs be and that just helps you keep on top of your seam allowance as I'm doing half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch on this seam allowance and I am going to do a couple of stitches reverse at the beginning and at the end just to secure that seam just make sure you get your you like your um, seams on top of each other, and then I can just jump across to the other side, take out my pin, and reverse, and that will just save a little bit of thread from being used up. And then you're going to repeat this again for your lining, exactly the same way. You're not sewing the lining and the outer together at this stage, you're just going to sew the backs onto each other at the shoulders, so snip through. So there we go. So when we open this out, look, we've got those two straight edge, long straight edges are meeting each other because that's where we put our fastening. And we've got the round of the neck edge just there. And then Sarah says to push the outer fabric to the back so we can just finger press that with our fingers. And then when I do the lining, I'll push the lining to the front. There's our bodice. So let's do the same again with our back. So there's our back. And then finally the two long straight edges and they need to match in the middle. And that'll make sure you've got them the right way round. And then again, we can just pop some fabric, um, some pins in, some fabric in some pins in just to hold those in place together and then we're just going to sew that shoulder seam as well on the lining and that will give us the start of our bodice just be careful when you're sewing these that the fabric doesn't get sucked down because it's just such a little edge sometimes it can you can just put a little bit of pressure on your um threads that you, you're starting and stopping threads just to hold that in place they're not going to come down and then let's go on to the so again I've not cut my threads before I move across to sew my next one just give yourself a little bit of a tail and that then should also help with things not getting sucked down into your machine as well Off. And 
these ones, I'm going to push those seam allowances to the front of the shoulder. Because then what's going to happen next is we're going to match these two pieces. So there's my front, um, my outer, and there's my inner. And you're going to put them right sides together. So on both pieces, you want your seam allowances sticking out. And then when you, you can do something called nest the seams. So when you're working with these seams on the shoulders you can because you've pressed one going one way and one the other the seams will sit on top of each other and you can kind of get them so they butt right up against each other so they're really nice and tight and that will give you a nice intersection so let's put a little pin at that point there for that intersection you do, sometimes if you've got some very thick pins sometimes they won't go through the fabric very well on these quilting cottons and you can buy something called silk pins, which are just like ordinary pins, but they're just thinner. And so they do handle quite nicely. So they're quite a nice addition to your sewing room if you've got if you've got the budget for them or you've got a Christmas or birthday present coming up. That's quite nice. So you're just matching and centre fronts want to match as well. So you're matching that, that um, edge and you can just make sure that your edges are matching on your dress as well. And that will help make sure that everything's lined up properly the bottom edge and then again we're going to just do the same on the back here as well and I'll probably pin into the corner there on that back centre backs across there so that makes that sit nice and then just one at the bottom just to make sure that's holding those hems together nicely going on to the other one so hems mat, get those all matching up nicely. And then we're going to start from the hem edge and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance or half a centimetre. And we're going to sew, okay, so that's mine all pinned together. So we're gonna start at the hem edge down here, which is the centre back, and we're going to reverse and come up to this point here. I'm gonna pivot there and then we're going to take our time really slowly around this circle. That's going to be a real test of your skills and your pivoting skills. Just take it one stitch at a time to get a nice smooth edge. And then again, stop here, pivot, and then come back down here and then sew down. So let's have a go. So it's nice and easy at the moment because we've got our quarter of an inch. So we can measure that on our seam allowance. Let's just start off with that. So forward and then reverse. And then you need to stop and put your needle in your work. Really essential. We're going to take out one of our pins to start off with and we're heading up. Just fold the rest of the bodice out of the way so that you can work. And I've just folded mine back and we're coming up to this point just here. So keeping your half an inch seam, half a centimetre or quarter of an inch seam allowance. And when you get quite close to the top, we can take out that pin because the needle is anchoring that down. And then up to the top here and then we stop with our needle in the work. And then we can lift up our presser foot. We can now pivot our work because that needle is down in through the work. I need to just a couple more stitches or probably just one maybe. I'll try again after one stitch. That's probably enough. So again, one stitch was just all I needed extra just to get me closer to that neck edge. And now we're gonna start and go around there. So I'm gonna do a little bit first because it starts off fairly straight and then I'm going to pivot and literally just moving just a really small amount. And you're just trying to keep your presser foot, the edge of your presser foot for your quarter of an inch, just alongside where your needle is on that neck edge and that will help you and then up again and then come down. So I'm coming closer to that corner, that shoulder edge. So again, a couple more stitches and just that slight turn just helps all your fabric and everything just stay really straight. And now I can fold out this part of the neck where, we would, where we'd fold it out the way. Take out the centre front pin, and now we're going to do quite a quite a big change of direction towards that front. So we're kind of going round the circle of the neckline. We're going round this part just here. Look, in there, that circle of that neckline, and that's what you need to just take your time to pivot around. And the slower you go, the smoother that curve will be. I'll take mine out in a minute and show you. And it just takes your time, it takes a little bit of time, but it, you're only going to do this once, so it's worth taking us the time for it. I need to get a, a non-squeaky pedal as well for my sewing machine, I think. 
Take that one out for the corner because it's getting in the way. So now I'm going to fold the other bodice back and out of the way and the threads that were on that one just so that I can work cleanly with this, this other bodice side. I'm trying to remember to move my hands out of the way. One more stitch. And then we come down this side with our quarter of an inch and that's just straight. So again, we stop to take our pin out and go down to the bottom. starting threads off so let me just show you how this looks hopefully you'll be able the camera will be able to pick up my stitching lines so we started here up to the top up here and then we went around that circle around it oh yes you can see the stitches there so just by doing that frequent pivoting it just gives us a nice circle around that neck edge and you can see how the back and front want to overlap and that's why I folded one out of the way while I was working on one and then folded the other one out of the way okay so now we've done that let's find our snips and what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the corners for the um, back bodice points, but just take off a little bit more than just 180 degrees. So just where you take it off diagonally, just take off a little bit more. And you're going, oh, just, you need to be a few snips away, a few threads away from that corner. So if you hold that one up, you can see how close hopefully I've got to that. So on both sides, just there. And then with the curve of the circle, we're going to do little snips at right angles to our stitching line, up to, but not through, that stitching line. When you come to your seam allowances, you can just trim that back at a diagonal on the top and on the bottom. And that will just cut out some bulk. It's a very small amount that comes off, but it's worth doing. Such a tiny, tiny little neckline, isn't it, for Mary? Bless her. Take off those little bits of seam allowance because that will help it all sit flat and get rid of the pull. And this won't fray, it's ju it just helps it all lie flat and get you a lovely smooth neckline on there. So the next thing that we're going to do then is we are going to use our iron so we're just going to press it flat first because that helps with turning it so let's get our little iron so we're just going to press everything nice and flat put the steam back on just helps those stitches all stay in place and then what we can do then is on these corners here we need to turn those out just use your finger and just point it, put it into the edge. It's easy to see if you've got different fabric, but just be aware that if you've not, then you just need to take your time. And we can either use the a pointy tool or with a corner just to push into that edge and just get that corner just out nice and neat. Just be careful that you're not going to pop through your stitches. We don't want to do that, but we do want it all to sit nicely and be lovely at the back of her neck. Let's just find our place and do the other one. And the neck's going to struggle to sit still when you first go to press it, but that's because it's such a curvy edge. So we're just gonna take some time just to press that. So that should be, let's make sure that's coming out nicely on that other edge. Yeah, okay. So let's press those flat edges first. So you can open it out and then pull the lining and the front away from the side bodice and that will give you a nice flat edge like that which you can then fold on that stitched line and then just make sure that that will then sit down and that gives us one nicely folded edge. Let's do the other side, get that all nicely done. So again pull out the lining from the front and just press that bottom edge first centre back isn't it really where that's all matching make sure everything's all lined nice and flat and then what we need to do is fold so hold it out so you've got your front and back separate and then we're going to fold that edge back in because we want to get this lovely lovely curvy neckline to be straight so match up your side seams your shoulder seams first and if you want to you can just put a little pin in just to hold those just together for you while you're just pressing this neck edge 
it'll help you get your bearings and then on the other side let's just get that sitting nice and flat and you might have to go in and put some more snips in on that that neck edge because it really is a very very tight circle but don't worry if you have to do that just 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 open it out again see mine's wanting to just not quite sit flat flat so let me just put a couple more snips in just go in between your previous snips and it'll just help that fabric just sit sit flat so the tighter the curve generally the the, the more snips that you need so it's a bit of a trial and everything and then once you've got it sort of like flat you can then put it down onto your pressing mat or your pressing surface and then we can just take the iron in and that will start to get it all to lie flat for us. You'll be surprised how much flatter the, it'll go once it's been ironed and pressed. A little bit of mine showing through there. So let me just go back in and just make sure, see if I can put some more snips in. So the next stage that we're going to do then is we're going to put these edges together. Now, you know I like a lovely, neat finish inside mine, but sometimes on these smaller garments, and because of the way that the back is constructed, we can't do this like an ordinary lined back because it's not, it wouldn't work because these back bits here are actually going to cross over on the back and be sewn into the dress down that way and that's how Mary gets into it and the skirt's going to be one continuous piece so we cut so at this stage with looking at the instructions what Sarah is saying to do is to now just put a little tacking stitch along all the rest of the edges around the arm side and across the bottom hems in order just to get these pieces to sit right and I'm going to agree with her on this this point and we can zigzag those later so let me just make sure that's all sitting together nicely. So make sure all your hems and all your lines are all matching up nicely. And then we're going to sew everything that we haven't already sewn and neatened. So I'm going to start here, across here, I'm going to do just a, just just slightly less than a quarter of an inch. And I know it's going to sound like we can't do that, but we can. Just slightly less than a quarter of an inch down here, up here, around, down, across the front hem, back up again, around the other side and finish at the centre back here again. And that's just gonna hold those two pieces then together for us when we're working with them with them next time. So let me just move this out of the way and let's get started. So just make sure everything's all nice and flat. And I'm just doing just slightly less than that quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not reversing because we're just tacking these together now. So I'm still going to use my needle in my work just to hold it all together, but you just want to go really, really close. And we can, you could use a slightly bigger stitch if you wanted to, so that it's easier to remove at the end. But if you go slightly less than your seam allowance, hopefully it'll all be contained within your seam allowance and you won't need to, you won't need to take those stitches out. So just needle in the work and just pivot round as you need to, just to hold it together. Just attaching that 
bodice, the bodice lining and the outside of the front together on all those other edges and it'll just make it easier for us when we come to stitch it all together in the end. Come down to the final edge, just make sure you're right down as far as you can be and make sure that when you finish you're going to have a lovely edge on the bodice side, the top side of your bodice. Okay, the left didn't reverse if you noticed as well, we don't need to reverse when we're just tacking these together. Okay, so now we've got our bodice just as one piece and the lining is attached to the outer. You might not be able to see the difference, but hopefully, oh, there you can see the sparkle look on that fabric. And then that's my lining. I've just used a plain cotton because I want to save the sparkly for my special projects. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be working with is our sleeve. So let me just get everything ready for that. Okay, so if you locate your sleeve piece and we can take our pin out. It's obvious to me which is my right side and my wrong side of my fabric. And also we've got the two notches on one of them as well, haven't we? And, and one on the other, so that's good as well. So we can tell the difference with those. So then the next thing that we're then going to do is we are going to neaten this bottom edge here. And first of all, we're going to zigzag it along and then we're going to turn it up and then we're going to stitch it down to, to press it and to um, neaten it. So let's get onto my um, zigzag stitch. And the setting that I like to use for my settings is I like a, a zigzag width of two and a half and I like a stitch length of two. And that seems to have worked really well for me so far. So again, we're going to start and we want to zig in your fabric, but zag off if you can do, but we don't want it to bunch up too much. So let's do, so let's just go on the edge of here and just neaten this off. And again, we can chain piece because we've just got it nice and flat. So I'm just going to run straight from one piece onto the other. I can take my stitched fabric out. So you could overlock this edge if you wanted to as well. If you've got an overlocker and it's all set up for your correct colour thread. The next thing that I'm going to do is just using the ironing mat and the pressing mat and the iron is I'm just going to fold over just quarter of an inch and I'm just going to press that seam up. It's very small but we can just do it and just hold that in place. Just blow on it if it's a little bit hot to handle. I've just not got mine quite even there. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to be too precious about it. Just make sure you've not got too much of a variation between your edges because it'll make your underarm seam not match up if you're not careful. And obviously you want that to match if we can. So that's just folded that up like that for you where it's been zigzagged. And that's my other one. And just before you do anything else, just make sure that they're going to match on your underarm. You can lose a little bit in your underarm if you need to, but if they're as close as possible, then it's, it's good. And then we're going to take that back to the sewing machine. And then we are going to just press. Um, we're not going to press, we're going to stitch it. So take it off your zigzag, back to your straight stitch. And move your needle again if your settings have been altered. And you're just going to just do a straight stitch, just holding this hem down in place. I just want to, before we go any further, because we're at the stage where we're going to use the trim, so let me just get my trims together because I want to talk to you about trims. So if we look at Mary Angel on here, she's got a trim on the bottom of her sleeve there and also around her tummy on the dress here. And if we make the halo, we're also going to need some for the halo bit as well. So this is the trim that comes in the kit. Mine's got 
fur on it. It's very pretty. It is, it's got, mine's got this pink, but I don't know if you can see, mine's gone quite fluffy with all the fur because it's actually a iron-on trim and the back is really quite plasticky. Um, beautifully diamond though, nice and sparkly with those pink stones as well. But I'm not sure I'm a fan. So I'm going to show you how to use this because you this will become what comes in your kit and you'll need to know how to use that. But the other thing is, excuse the crinkling, but I've been online and I've bought a diamante trim like this, which I think is really pretty. And I think that if I use multiple strands of this, so say like three strands, I'm gonna to have to attach it by hand that that's going to be equally as nice as this one, but it's not going to give me the plastic on the back of it. So it depends what you want. This isn't that expensive. I think I paid about eight euros for 11 meters, I think, something like that. But it is gonna be more time consuming. And if you're wanting to use this one, I know that I um, spoke to Anne and she agreed she wanted to use a different one. Um, and if you're going to attach this kind of trim, then we need to attach that afterwards. So we will construct all of our sleeves, um, including sewing it in the round, and then I will come back later and I will take the time to attach the trim in multiple layers onto the bottom of her sleeves. So I will show you that bit at the end if that's what you want to do and that's the look you want to go with. But I'm going to show you now how to attach the heat um fabric if you wanted to do that because i've got a, a spare um bodice here and i can use a little bit of that just to show you how that fits on and how it how it goes and how it looks when once it's on and again it's just personal preference there's not a right way or a wrong way of which you want to use and, and you may consider that you've already spent enough money on the kit you don't want to be buying anything extra um but again i'm just working on the basis that that the kits go, it, the, the animals, the festive friends are going to be around for a long time. And so I, I don't want to keep looking at it and be not sure about it. So let's use this piece of bodice now. So if you are in the instructions, it says that this is the point now where you would attach the, the um, trim to the hem. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And what you need to do is you need to cut your hem one centimetre shorter than the than the, the part that you're working on because what you want is that when you sew these side seams together just pretend that was the sleeve and we're sewing it together the edges of the trim are going to butt up and not get caught because you can't sew over this trim with your machine so it has to stop short of that um, seam that you're working on um, I can't hold it very well and show you but if that was the seam just down there, you've got to have the two bits butting up to it. So those are my reasons for why I'm, I'm choosing to do it differently. But let's have a go and do it and see how it works. So if you were doing it on the end of your sleeve, what I would do now is I would measure in one centimetre and then I would put a pin there to show me that that's where that trim's going to go up to. And I'd do that on both sides. So that's the on this one and repeat it on the other one. Then you would get your trim and you would lay it across that edge of that sleeve and then you would be cutting it to make sure that your trim finishes at that one centimetre point. So in this case, I'd probably take off a snip just along here because on mine, the big pink circles gets in the way. So what you've got to do is you, you, you're kind of wanting to centre, if I just hold that up, so if I put it to the cut edge of the ribbon as it is now, this plastic ribbon, and then laid that across, you can see that that pink one there is getting cut in half. Well, I don't want that. So if I take off this first little row of diamantes there and move my pink one up, then when I come to the other side, I can do the same on the other side and that's then going to match and look really pretty. So that's what you would do with there, on there. So that's what I would do. So let's do the same on this piece of bodice just to show you how this gets attached. So where's my one centimetre? It's there for that one. Mark my one centimetre here for this one. Okay. 
Okay, so then onto our pressing mat, and then we're going to measure our piece of our tape. So I'm going to cut it off just through in there. And you can just use your scissors to cut it because it's just plastic underneath. But I'm going to take off that little section just there in order to make sure. And you can save these little bits for something else. Then what Sarah says to do then is to warm up your fabric with your iron. And then that will start the process of the tape wanting to sit on top of your garment. Hasn't with mine, so that's interesting. Just do it a bit more and just see if it'll stick. Oh, it will do once it gets quite hot. So you can't afford for it to cool down in between. And don't let it touch your iron either. And also there's a little bit of stretch in it as well. So it might be that you can stretch it as well a little bit to get it to where you want it to be. Once I've got that in place, take out your pins, hold it, measuring your centimetre because we've got the centimetre away at the edge that hasn't stuck. I'll just put this on. And then you're going to turn it over. So the turn it over so that you've got the right side down onto your press mat. And now you can apply some heat. I probably would turn off my steam, but I'd apply the heat. Don't touch it though, because it's going to be hot. And then when you turn it over and let it cool, that is now stuck onto the fabric. But give that time to cool because that's got to cool down in order for that glue to adhere. So you're not doing it on the bodice at this point, you're doing it on the bottom of the sleeves, but I've got a spare bit of bodice that I could show you how that actually fits on. And the stone stayed quite hot for quite a long time. So just be aware of that. Maybe just give it a blow. But that's what you're wanting to do to make sure that that has stuck if you're wanting to use the bodice. And I can see that in some places it's coming up a little bit more. So I'd give it a little bit more um, heat than I have done. I might want to remove mine, so I'm not going to do any more heat on that at the moment. And that is what you're wanting to do, okay, is to adhere that, to make sure it's stuck. So just make sure that you, you, you adhere that bit to the bottom of the, each of your sleeves using your centimetre in and, 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 and stick that on. But then when you sew this together, there may be a situation where we need to be aware that if you've got your trim, you won't be able to get your presser foot to sew down here very easily. And we might have to zip, change to a zipper foot in order to be able to stitch down there because the zipper foot would allow us to put the two edges of our trim together and the edges of our bodice together. And then we'll be able to sew quite close to the end of those. And that will then give us that circular um, join that we want. However, with mine, I'm going to use my trim and I'm going to attach that later. So I'm going to carry on now without attaching the trim on here, but you take the time to just follow what I've done and attach your trim to the bottom of your bottom of your sleeves, okay, to both of them. Okay, then I'm going to move my ironing board out of the way because we've we've finished with that for now. And we're going to look at attaching our sleeves into our bodice. So if we take our bodice here and then we want to have a look at our sleeves, we want to get the centre notch point first and we're going to put this sleeve down right sides onto our bodice so you've got right sides together and that's the first notch I'm going to match up. I'm then going to find where I've got my one notch for the front and two notches from the back maybe or, well actually we probably ought to do that first autumn we so let's get our two notches for the back first oops get the right way around claire angularly challenged sometimes i am so that's the one for the front so that's fine so let's match up the one notch for the front first and put a pin in and then we're going to match our underarm on that side as well to make sure that's nicely matched and I'm putting my pins into the centre here so all the pin heads are on the top. And then you're going to just gently manipulate round on your fabric to make sure that your centre notch goes onto the top of your sleeve head. And put a pin in there. 
and then as you manipulate the fabric round you can put the two notches on top of each other as well keeping those edges raw edges together and that just sits on top and put it in there and then again you're going to match up the underarm seams again to make sure you've got a an edge there too so it looks quite tightly constructed in there and when we fold it out it's going to go together nicely there's there is some excess in there that needs to be um eased and Sarah doesn't say anything about putting the gathering stitches in but I think I might because if you look we've got a bit of a loop there where there's a lot of fabric and on this edge here there isn't very much fabric but the, the start and stop are together Let's put some gathering stitches in the top of there because I think that'll make it easier. So, let's go to our machine. You can change thread colour if you want to. I'm going to use the same, I ought to change, I'm just going to change one of them because then you'll be able to see it when I've sewn it. So let me use a different colour. Um, let's use this pink. Being as it's the Mary. So I'm just changing my top thread colour just to make it easier to be able to take the thread out once we get to the, once we've done the gathering stitches. And I'll probably do the same on the skirt as well. Just thread that in, wait a second. Okay, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have the wrong side of my sleeve up and just between the notches, we're on, yep, we're on a straight stitch. Quite close to the top, just less than a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to take some stitches. Oh, we need to let off our tension, don't we, as well? So take that down to two. And the stitch length, I'm going to leave at, put that up to 2.8, which is what we use for doing our top stitching normally. So that's one row of stitching. Just along the top edge, just there. And now I'm moving my threads out of the way. I leave, leave tails as well. If you've got a machine that automatically cuts the threads for you, you need to just leave, switch that function off because you need to be able to um, go around this top here and have some tails to your thread so you can gather it up. So there we go. So we've got two rows of gathering stitches across the top there that you can see in pink. Right, now we're going to... Go, I'm going to go to my white stitch, my white threads, but you, whichever ones you bobbin threads, separate those out so you've got those together and then just pull on them slightly and just gather that sleeve head from both sides. So it just makes the edge of the sleeve a little bit shorter. So that's what it looks like after you've gathered it in slightly because when we actually go to put that in, that'll make it much easier to put in. So let's go back again to where we were. Let's match up the underarm seam, or the underarm edge. Match up your single notch for your single notch to make sure that's right. This is right sides together again, don't forget. Then you're gonna match your top but find your notch for the top of your sleeve head and put that onto the top of the shoulder seam and that top of the shoulders that we stitched earlier joining the front and the back bodies together get the stitches in I pinned in and then join up the back notches together And this is where you can just change the instructions a little bit. If you've got a preferred way of working, or if you were happy just to just to keep going, you don't want to put the gathering stitches in, then just go ahead. You know, it's your project at the end of the day, um, but this is just how I prefer to do it. And I'm trying to show you sort of, I suppose, best practice, but it depends on what you consider to be best practice. So once we've got the sleeve in, I can see that it's still not sitting quite straight um, and quite smoothly. So now I can just go and add some more gathers in, just put a little bit more tension on that, those bobbin threads and it'll just pull it in and cinch it in enough that when we start to stitch this it's all going to sit nicely 
So we're, we're shortening the sleeve top edge in order to make it right. Now it might put some little gathers on the top of the sleeve, but I don't mind that look. If I was doing a jacket, say like a tailored jacket, then obviously you'd need to learn how to ease that in. But on these small garments, and because it's a dress for, an eight, for a character, it doesn't bother me at all. So that's why I'm doing this way. So then what we'll do then is we'll start here and stitch round and then stitch that in. But I'm just gonna gather my other one while I've got my top thread in as the pink. Um, so I'll do that and I'll come back to you when I've changed my thread back over to white and I'm ready to stitch in those sleeves. Okay, so let's put my white bottom thread back in again and I'm going to stitch it with the bodice down and the sleeve up because then I can just control those gathers a little bit better. Remember to tighten up your tension again, don't let, and also take your stitch length down, back down to your 2.2 for your construction. And I'm again using the edge of my presser foot. I've got my needle in position number seven so that I can do that, get quite close to the edge. And then I'm going to use my needle down into the work in order to hold that down. Again, if you've got a an awl, that's a good good tool to have just to help you manipulate these smaller amounts of um, fabric through the under the presser foot. So again, take out your pins as you get close to them. Just press, lift up your presser foot, and just make sure everything's all sitting nicely, and that your raw edges are together. A little bit further forward, and I'm going to need to just manipulate this fabric a little bit just to make sure that it's all sitting nicely and that the underneath fabric is flat for me. And just keep, keep checking by just peeping underneath and lift up your presser foot and just move the fabric around just to make sure you've not got any hookers forming underneath. And that it's a tiny, tiny armhole that you're working with here. So again, you just need to Give yourself some grace, just take your time. Just feel underneath with your finger just to make sure that it's smooth, but keep your foot away from your foot pedal when you are doing that. And then just pivot as you need to, just to get around the edge of the bottom of the armhole and the arm side, just to, and then just reverse at the end. Oops, keep your fingers crossed for me. Doesn't look too bad. So we can see some little um, puckers ironed in at the moment from where the fabric's been manipulated, but I'm happy that that's in the essence smooth. So now what I can do is I can use my awl, just get underneath my gathering stitches and just pull that thread out. Not too hard, make sure you don't break any of your stitches that you need to keep in. And then I can remove one bit of the pink. And then I can go onto the other one and then remove that one as well so that we've got rid of all of those gathering stitches in that sleeve head. I didn't quite let off my tension enough on those first few stitches I think and it's just caught. But I'll use my quick unpick just to take those pink stitches out and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side in order to... I need my glasses on really don't I? I'm trying to do it without. And then that's going to give us a lovely, nice clean. And then what I'm going to do is um, go back in again. Get those threads out. Is go back in again and I'm just going to use my zigzag stitch and I'm just going to zigzag over the top of that seam that we've just sewn. Can you see how that's just sitting? So we have got a few little gathers in the sleeve head, but I don't mind that on my angel. I think that's going to look just nice anyway. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's get on to the next one and put the other one in exactly the same way. Match up your notches, just gather your, um, your threads together first, give you a little bit of gathering, match your notches and then sew it in again as we did that one and that will get that sleeve in for you as well. And we'll be on to, I think we're on to the skirt next after that bit. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, so I've just got my second sleeve in again with no puckers, that's good. So it is possible, but just take your time and I did have to stop and and, and pull the fabric to make sure that my bodice fabric was straight underneath as I was stitching. Um, the next thing that I'm going, and I've taken out my gathering threads as well, um, and then the next thing that we're going to do now is we're just going to zigzag over those stitches, those um, rough edges that we've got on those sleeve caps here. So I'm just gonna take this to my machine, put it onto my zigzag stitch and again those same settings that I like before 2.5 width and a 2 length 
and we're just going to just take that over. It'll just stop it from fraying in the future. You could argue that if your characters aren't ever going to be undressed, then you don't need to worry too much about it. Um, and mine probably aren't, but again, it's just it's just nice. It's a it's a nice thing to do just to finish it off nicely. just when it's just neatened off slightly just makes it just means it won't fray them so let's do the i'll do the other one and then we'll i'll come back to you so the next thing we've got then is we've got our um bodice which is all finished with our sleeves i'm just giving that another little press and put that to one side you'll so we'll have the trim don't forget on the sleeves but we're actually going to be working with our skirts next and we're going to be doing a lot of gathering. So what I recommend that you do now is actually change your bobbin and your top thread for a different colour. I'm going to use that baby pink that I was just using because that sort of oops, seemed to show up quite nicely but without being too interfering I think. It's going to come out anyway but it's if you if you change your thread um, top and bottom for your a different colour it makes it really easy to identify which is your gathering threads and which aren't so that's why i would suggest that's a bit of a top tip okay so let me just um do that now and i'll be back with you in a second okay the other thing that i would say is don't use your very best thread i don't i don't gather in gutterman thread for example that's my, one of my favorites to work with um i always use a bit of a cheaper thread just for doing my gathering but you want one that doesn't break too easily because you do need to put the pressure on it as you're as you're gathering it so you're going to get your two pieces of um your upper and lower skirt and we remember we put that little notch in the center front just to be able to help us and just help keep those gathers equal and now what we're going to do is leave about half a centimeter from the side edge um, and you need tails on your machine as well for your thread so you can pull those up and I'm going to now take my tension down I take mine down to about a number two from a number five which is what I normally do my construction stitches on and I'm going to also take it off um, zigzag stitch and then I'm going to take my stitch length up to a three. So that just means that it'll gather through more easily and make it easier. So we're going to go do one row of stitching that's slightly less than our seam allowance and one row of stitching that's slightly more. So I'm doing about an eighth of an inch um, and about a quarter of a centimetre for my first row of stitches. And again, I'm stopping about a centimetre away from the edge. Leave it some, give it some tails. So that's probably a better one. I'm a bit too generous there with it, but, but more like that. And then I'm going to put it back in again. And on the same piece of fabric, you do a second row of stitches. Because these two rows of stitches just like on the sleeves when you gather those up it'll give you some really nice gathers so we're only gathering the top of this one not the bottom and we're going to do the same on the second piece of our top of our um, top tier and then we're going to then look at our tier of our second skirt find our notches again for the center front we didn't need them on the center bottom and we're going to put those same rows of gathering stitches just on the top edge only of this one okay let me do that with mine and then I'm going to come back to you and talk to you about what we do next. So when you've done that you'll end up with your four pieces of skirts. There's the two upper tier which are the shorter ones with their rows of stitching along the top there and the two longer lower tiers and they've got those stitching. Now I do find it easier to do the hem on the lower skirt before I start to gather it so I'm going to suggest that we do that um, and because we're adding the fur, what I'm going to suggest you do, and this is going to be counter to anything else that you've done before, is I'm going to turn up quarter of an inch towards the right side. So you can see that's the sparkly side of my fabric. I'm going to turn up quarter of an inch to, to the right side here because eventually our fur trim will cover this hem so we don't need to neaten it. So if we turn it up that way, and then I will then just put a row of stitches, or probably just iron it actually, that'll be enough at this stage, that when we then go to add the trim once this is all on and in the round, then we'll, be, we'll have that memory on that piece of fabric there. So let's just take, get our seam gauge here. Seam gauge, let's get our ironing mat and board. 
and literally I'm just going to eyeball a quarter of an inch because it just needs to be just that little bit that's just going to be stitched up and just putting that memory in the fabric on that ironed line will just help that stay up for us when we come to attach the fur and as I say the fur is two and a half centimeters wide and we're only turning up um, half a centimeter so it'll well and truly be covered by the fur so again just while this is in the flat I just think this is just so much easier to do at this stage and then if you want to make sure you can just measure your side seams because these eventually will be joined together just make sure that they're once you've got that folded up it's equal it is on that side and it is on that side you can measure and pin and, and then press if you want to but you can see now how that fabric is just staying put where we want it to and that's the that's the beauty of working with a, 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 a um, quilting cotton it just holds that crease beautifully right so that was just a little extra step at that stage that I just wanted you to do so now what we're going to do now is we are going to now take our threads identify your bobbin threads because generally that's the easier one to stitch up and just use a pin to separate the the threads if you need to because you want just the two back threads not the two front threads oh I can't say that very easily a bit of a tongue twister that is and then once you've identified those two then just hold those together and then just pull on just just hold those still but then just pull your fabric down those get those threads and it'll just start to gather for you between your finger and your thumb just gather those up towards the middle and then just go to the other side because you're better off to gather towards the middle than you are to try and go one end all the way to the other We've put that little notch, if you remember, in the centre front, haven't we? So you know where you're aiming towards. There's my two bobbin threads there. And then give those a little, little gather as well, and that'll start and take that up into the centre. So that's what that's going to look like. So that, so that seam there is going to be attached to our waist. And then what we're going to do now is going to get a one of the longer pieces and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to find our center on the, we're going to find our two back threads, two bobbin threads, and again, going to gather that up towards the center. And again, the two ones here. So we've gathered up one of the front, one of the upper tier, and one of the lower tier at a time just so that we keep ourselves straight because then with our upper tier, let me put the other two out of the way for the moment. Now what we're going to do is turn over our upper tier and you should have the centre notch in the bottom of that one, the hem, and that matches against the gathered edge that you're just working with of your lower tier. So just put those two notches together and put a pin in to hold those together, make sure your raw edges are together. So that's right sides together as well. And then we're going to come back to the start of the two skirts and we're going to put a pin holding those two together. Just one on the edge. And then we're going to go to the other edge and then we're going to put a pin holding the other edge together. Now what you want to do is gather your, the threads on your lower tier until the edge of the fabric meets the same width as your upper tier and I don't worry about how even they're gathered at the moment I just want to roughly get them into the right place the right length and then once I've got them in the right length now can you see I've got a flat bit here and then I've got a lot more gathers there now I'm going to move those gathers along the, the just using my nails and your fingers and just even those out so that those gathers are equal along the end and if you wanted to you can take your gathering threads for your um for the back and just do a figure of eight around your pin and that will make sure that doesn't come undone once you once you've got it but don't do that until you've got your your um the, the two pieces of fabric the same length because otherwise you'll you'll need to just keep undoing it all the time so make sure you don't get a, a blank spot in the centre front because you want that to be nicely gathered because that's where it's going to be noticeable on the front of her skirt. 
and then once you're happy with your gathers you can go along that edge and just put a couple more pins in just holding those raw edges together for you ready for stitching just make sure you're happy with all your gathers so what you're wanting is all of your gathers to be on this lower tier edge but when you look at your upper tier edge you've got no puckers and no gathers at that point there where the two are going to meet so this edge here needs to be flat and st still obviously the pins are in it at the moment and all your gathers are on this section here and you can see that hem there just folded up towards the the right side as well ready for later so let's do the other side so let's find our threads and I just kind of just move them along just to, until they're kind of the right length and then once you're happy that's pretty much the right length and I do the figure of eight around my pin just to hold those threads in place so that it doesn't come undone and then now we can just tease those gathers into place along the skirt just to make sure that that's going to sit nicely and again you don't want a flat piece at the center front so make sure either side of that pin in the middle there they're right and they're sitting nicely and then you're going to draw it just put your pin in to hold those edges raw edges together and having that center notch in there which wasn't on the pattern just means you get it equal between the right side and the left side um, of your skirt and just that you've got the gathers it uh, are you know sort of um shared equally and that you've got the same amount of skirt front and back okay so let's put those into place there we go so that's the skirt all ready to be done so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go and gather the other skirt ready because we'll sew this seam first the, between the two two parts of the skirt first and then I'm going to zigzag over the top of that cut edge as well, just to neaten that once I've taken out my um, gathering thread. So I'll I'll stitch it to gather it and um, stitch it to sew with the two pieces of fabric together. Make sure there's no puckers first on my on my lower tier. Let me go that way. It'll be easier for you because this is going to be the waist edge here. And this is the skirt goes fuller as you go down towards the hem. Make sure there's no puckers. Then I'll take out my gathering threads just on the seam we've just sewn and I'll neaten that one first. The other thing that I do is just before I start stitching, I position my fabric, but then I'll take this pin out and pull out that figure of eight so I don't sew over that figure of eight um, threads that are just holding those gathers in place um, before we start stitching. And you leave your threads in place for your waist seam because we'll be doing that shortly. So get your other skirt so that it's at the same point and then we'll meet back here. Okay, so I've got both of my skirt pieces now ready to be sewn. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I put my stitch um, tension back to the five because we were on the two for the gathering stitch. I've changed my thread over from the pink to the white again. And I'm going to take my stitch length back down to a 2.2. I'm also going to move my needle position again. So I've got my quarter of an inch seam allowance against the edge of my presser foot. I have found, oh, I think it is easier if you keep the upper one just flat and not gathered I mean it, it, it's not going to be that much difference but it's it might be just be slightly easier for you if you keep the the waist gathers on the piece just like just out of it for the moment so now what I'm going to do is keeping my threads out the way for my gathering as much as possible is I'm going to take reverse stitch at the start and bottom without going over any pins and put my needle in the work just so I can have more maneuverability with it and then I'm just going to stitch and the idea is that you stitch in the center of these two rows of gathering so you're stitching in between those two rows just there in order that you don't sew over your threads but just see how you get on with it and the other thing is every now and again just give your skirt a tug so that you hold on to the gathered edge with your two fingers here and you give your skirt a tug just to make sure that all of those pleats and those gathers are, are st staying sort of horizontally across your sewing bed and that will make the, the pleats on the skirt sit a lot nicer as well. Make sure your raw edges are together. Stop for your pins. So I can see I've got a little bit of a twisted gather there 
So just by pulling on that, I can make sure that that's going to be right. The other thing you can do is as you're going along, you can just manipulate your gathers as well to make sure that they're how you want them to be. And lift your press foot up if you need to and just manipulate your gathers so that you're happy with them. That one I'm not very happy with, where's my organ? So this is where you can again just manipulate things underneath with your awl and your pointy tool just to just to make things sit where you want them to be. Keep your raw edges together. you want it to be sort of stitched like that so your line goes in between because then once you've done that then just have a quick look at your skirt edge make sure that you've got no puckers on your top edge because that should all be flat and if that's the case then you can then pull on your threads your bobbin threads go from this side I think it'll be easier just highlight one at a time not that not don't pull them both at the same time just one at a time and then you should be able to just pull that and that should just go all the way through. It might just snap halfway through because that's what it has a tendency to do. But just put something underneath the edge just to identify where the edge of that thread is. And then it's so easy to be able to think, right, it's a pink, pink thread, it needs to come out. And just take that out all the way along the edge. I did have a little bit of a problem with this one of mine. So that's why it's not coming out smoothly. But generally they come out quite smoothly. But easy to see where you are with that thread then when it's a different colour rather than doing the same colour. As you, see, as you get a bit more advanced, you can keep up with the same colour um, and you'll be fine. But yeah, so pull those threads, the gathering threads out so you've got no pink thread left in at all. As I say, mine's, mine's not cooperating, but then I am on camera and that's generally what happens. And if you pull out your one that you were gathering anyway, so in my case, I've always tried to gather my bobbin thread, then it will pull out. And then once you've pulled that one out, you can go to the other end and identify where the top thread is. And that will just pull straight out for you just as easily. OK, so take your pink threads out and then we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to neaten off this top edge just to make sure that that, that um Gathered edge is just going to stay nice and neat for us. So I'll just get my pink threads out. I'm going to do the same on the other one. I'm going to stitch this one as well first and take out those pink threads. And then I can do my um, neatening all together. Okay, so this is how my skirt looks without that pink thread in at that way seam. So I've still got my pink threads in the in the waist one, but not in the one we've just sewn. And now all I'm going to do is use is do the zigzagging across the edge here. Let me take those threads off first, which is my start and stop thread from sewing the seam. So again, back onto our stitch number eight for me, which is my zigzag, and I'm doing 2.5 width and a two length. And I'm just gonna zig in the fabric, but just then off the edge. Okay, so I'll take those two out, take the threads off the ends. We've got two skirt panels that we're ready to use. So there's one, and there's our second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bodice. Let's do the front skirt first. So decide which one you like the gathers on the most. I think it's this one for me. And then they might both be exactly the same, in which case that's fine. And then we're going to do what we're going to do first is just put the two sleeve so this is the center of the front of the bodice and we're just going to put fold those in half so that the underarm seam is is located and is touching each other and then just put a pin in the middle just there just to mark the halfway point you could have put a notch there as well if you wanted to then in your skirt we remember we put a notch in the center front so we're going to match that notch and that pin together 
and then just put that into place. And then we're going to go to the underarm seam and we're going to match that up together. So just pull your sleeve out of the way. We've not sewn those sleeve edges together yet and that's deliberate. And put a pin in there to hold on to that. And then go to the other edge and then you're going to match your other, just keep your gathering threads out of the way, your other underarm seam to the other edge of the skirt and then put another pin in just there to hold that intact. So we've got our three pins holding our three points together on our skirt. And now we can take our bobbin threads of our skirt gathers. Mine have got sewn into the bottom skirt, but I can keep them separate. And then we're now going to do what the same as we did for the other skirt, just keep gathering that up until the two edges of fabric, the edge of the bodice and the edge of the skirt are the same and making sure we don't have any gaps center front. We just need one more pin just holding that in place so just a small seam and then we're going to go to the other side and then we're going to match gather those edges up so that they match as well so this so the edges of the, the dress the center waist at the front and the skirt are both the same length and put a pin in to hold that in place and we're going to just take that to the sewing machine and do our quarter of an inch seam allowance half a centimeter and sew the bodice onto the skirt so we're on zigzag at the moment so let's take that off back to stitch number one and then i want to now move my needle again because mine goes back once i change stitch my needle moves position yours might not and i'm going to put the flat bit of the bodice against the bed of the machine and then i'm just going to sew with a straight stitch a quarter of an inch just attaching the side bodice, the bodice to the skirt. Put your needle in your work so that you can then manipulate because I can see that that's dropped slightly on that. My raw edges weren't quite together. So I can just manipulate those and make sure that's right. And things do sometimes move and again when you get to the centre pin here I've got a bit of a flat spot so I'm just going to move my gathers along my gathering threads just with my awl just to cover that flat spot make sure my raw edges stay together and then sew over the top of that a bit too fast take out my next pin and then onto the end here and just reverse at the end and my reverse to the stuff at the start as well there we've got our seam. You can see the tacking threads that I had before. Take off your start and stop threads. Try and keep it neat because it just helps with the number of threads that you've got hanging around because of all the pulling. And then we're going to pull on the bodice threads one at a time. So this is the lower, lower row of gathering and I can just pull on that and that just pulls straight out. And so just the corresponding thread before, that's one row out. And then sometimes you catch the them if you do. If you do find it like I've got a stitch there, don't pull too hard. Just find where it's kind of catching. And then with your quick and click, get my glasses on. I'm just going to find where that point is, and then I can just put my quick and pick blade un underneath the extra bit. Oop, low power mode, need to put my phone in. And then I can just then pull that bit out to that point and then just go to the other side and then I'll be able to pull the other one out to the other side and it just pulls it all the way through. And then I can then pull on the top thread and that just pulls it out too. Sometimes they just get stuck. You just don't want to pull them so hard that you break through the stitches that you've just done. But being as it's a different color, it's easy to see what, what the, the thread is that you want to come out. Let me just go and plug my phone in so I don't die on the, on the um, not die not me but the um, phone doesn't die but that's how that's looking now for the front of our dress which is looking really pretty okay and we are going to do the same for the back but slightly different way in that on the back here we need to overlap so if you remember if you're wearing it generally we have the right side over the left side don't we and as a, as a girl's costume if you're not bothered then don't worry but we've got two notches on the back there that we can put together so before we do anything else I'm going to suggest that you just take that to your machine, pin it if you need to, but make sure that that's lying flat and you've got your notches together on that bottom seam. Can you remember we had the two notches just at the bottom there? 
and I'm overlapping so that the notches are together and then we're just going to stitch that in place just to make sure because you're going to need to put a little prestard on the back of that just to finish it off but if we just join it together now make sure you, your hem edges are, are straight then that's just going to put that into place and just hold that in place while we're working with it and it gives us that one continuous run then and this is also the reason why we've not been able to line our bodice and neaten that edge as we wanted to because this is going to be the skirt's going to be attached in one go um, and it just doesn't give us the facility to neaten that. I haven't needed to zigzag this edge yet because I'll do them both at the same time. So let's take our section where we've just overlapped it, find our centre notch and then match our notches up together on that edge and we're going to put a pin in. Might be a bit thick just there but the pin goes in there. And then we go to one end and match that with the edge of our bodice. Not our sleeve, the edge of the bodice. Sleeves are out of the way. Just to fold them out of the way. And then come to the other edge of that underarm seam. And then we're just going to pin that together as well. So we're back to where we were before. But we haven't got any gathers in this yet. So identify your bobbin threads. Because they're generally the easiest ones to gather up, hold on to your threads and then just pull your skirt, the, the, the skirt fabric along until it matches the same length as your bod bottom of edge of your bodice, which is what we're working with. Okay, so this is how our dress is looking at the moment. So this is our back skirt with the overlap at the back of the neck. There's our two sleeves. And then that's the front of our skirt there. Now, if you are using the heat applicable um, trim, you now need to measure in one centimeter from each part of your bodice, and then you need to stick your iron your trim on to that center bodice seam there. I don't know if there's any at the back. Um, I think it's just to the front. Let's have a little look on the other side. I think it just shows it on the front so it depends you're just going to have to be careful because if you want to have some to um, be there on the halo then you probably need to measure your halo piece of um, that iron on trim first before then you decide whether you've got enough to do your bodice or not as well um, as I say I'm not using that for mine so you would go ahead now and you would attach that onto that part of the dress just there but remember to start and stop one centimeter in because you need to be able to sew your seams Okay. So in the next stage then, once you've got your trim on there, is we're going to then fold this dress in half so your sleeve is in half. And remember, you might have trim on the edge of that. And you're going to match your underarm seams. My underarm seams don't really want to match, but I'm going to match my edges. So sleeve, your sleeve cuff is important to, to match. Then you want to be matching your waist seam. On your dress so fold find where the two stitch lines are and put a pin there to hold that together I'm going to show you what to do if my underarms aren't quite matching I think I've not taken enough seam allowance at the end so I'll show you how to alter that and then I'll just do the um, stitch like uh, attached just here as well and then again at the hem and then that will give me my reference points to make sure that this is working and matching up Okay, so I've just um, pinned mine together, but I can see that there's a difference it, it, between the length of the sleeves at the front and the back on, on mine, and I must have taken more seam allowance on one than the other. The way to fix that is to um, lay your sleeve flat until you get to the seam allowance, so where we sewed for the sleeve on, and then I'm going to put a pin, because that's going to tell me how much... I need to take off it's quite a bit actually and then on the other side again I'm going to put another pin if I straighten out the side bodice I can again put a pin and that's going to kind of tell me when I put those two pins together where I need to re-sew so what I'm going to do is just join my threads again here at the beginning on the underarm because that's my sleeve and I'm working on the inside of the garment and I'm just going to take my seam allowance down lower so that it incorporates that extra that I need to do. I've just not taken my seam allowance deep enough, I think. See if it does it the same on the other one, because it might be a pattern difference, maybe. 
but it's probably just me. Now you see that one matches up perfectly well, so I don't quite know why I've got one side matching up well and one side not. But that's how to fix it anyway. So the two pins are showing me if I undo that one on the matching the waists up, and that tells me where I need to stitch in order to join that together. So just put your machine onto a straight stitch. You can mark it with a Frixion pen if you want to, or take one of the pins out and just mark it against the pin it against the other one. I don't need to reuse zigzag because the neatening will stay in place, that's fine. So I'm just going to join these two sections back up again. Join my stitching up here. A couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, but I'm just going to take my seam allowance now lower and just reverse at the end there. And that's all that's needed, it's just, just to even them up basically. So that now when I put my underarm seams together they now match that's good and then when I put my two waist seams together for that skirt as well they too they match as well so because you want to have that continuous tier of skirt going all the way around and I can see I'm slightly off with that one that one's fine so let me just adjust this one as well and you need to get that sewn edge just so that it's right on the same point And then when you just open it up, you can see that your stitch lines is going to be continuous and that will then do right. And then we're going to start at the sleeve hem and a quarter of an inch seam allowance down to the underarm point where I'm going to pivot and then come down the side of the skirt. And I have just folded out the, fold, the ironed edge of my skirt because then I'll put that back down again once we've sewn that, um, that hem, but we just need that bit to be joined up. So let me get my needle into the right position because my machine's been off. Just line up my quarter of an inch seam allowance and a couple of stitches forward and a couple back. And then my needle in the work. And then that pin can come out. And then I'm just going to sew down to get to the edge of the seam allowance down here. Just take it steady when you're getting close to your pins more stitches to get into the right place and then I'm going to pivot so press the foot up my needle's in the work and then I can now pivot and come down this side seam here watch out for your pins and this is going to give Mary a beautiful lovely full skirt now before you do the second hem edge I'm actually going to suggest that we attach the trim I will just zigzag this edge and just neaten it. So that's got that side seam sewn. So if I pu push through the sleeve, we do just need to do that little cut underneath the arm. Let's do that first. So before you push out your sleeve, locate in the corner here where your stitching goes and where your um, sleeve meets your bodice. And then you're just going to do one snip towards those stitches, but not through them and then that will allow your sleeve to poke out more smoothly. You'll have your trim on yours, don't forget. If you need to, I didn't mention this, did I? Because you you may well have your trim down on, round your cuffs on your, on your dress for your character. There's the side seams all nicely matched up. If you've got that, let me just get my zipper foot to show you. What you can do is use this foot here for your machine. That's what mine looks like. It's a zipper foot. But that will allow you... Just move this sleeve. Oh, let's work on this one. So if you imagine you've got your trim across there, the, the, that plastic back trim, and you join those together, you've got a thickness just here. And your ordinary presser foot won't sew along that because it'll be too thick and that's where you'll need to use your zipper foot because you'll be able to get so much closer to that trim in order that you don't then hit it with your sewing machine because obviously that trim with the stones in it you're not going to be able to sew over that you've got to avoid it and that's what you'd need to do you'd need to use your zipper foot to go down this seam in order to avoid it because i'm doing my trim afterwards then i don't need to worry about that 
I need that one. Um, so I've just been able to just sew straight down mine. The problem you're going to have is, is if you're wanting to use that iron-on trim, you need to do it before you sew these side seams because you won't be able to press it on once it's in the round. You need to put it on before whilst it's still flat. So, once you've got to this section here where you've got your side seam on one side only done, we're then going to reach for our trim because the next thing I'm going to do is using our trim here and making sure that you've got your edge of your skirt folded up towards the right side normally you'd fold a hem to the wrong side find your mesh on the back of your faux fur Can you remember you've got the mesh back and then you're going to place that against the hem so that it, the edges uh, uh, the edge of the mesh meets up with the edge of the folded edge of the fur. Not the fur. So the mesh edge of the fur matches up with the folded edge of the skirt. And then you're going to then just put your pins along to hold that in place. And I think this is another job that's easier done when it's in the flat rather than when it's in the round. So again, just periodically just pin that in place. And having that folded edge up is just going to give that a neat edge rather than it just be zigzagged on the edge. I just think it'll stop it from fraying. And also it stops you from having the fray the zigzagged edge on the inside as well. It's quite a long skirt this is, so it'll take you a little while. But just go around and just, just pin it all on. And then I will come back to you when I'm about to stitch it. So that's going to go on the end like that, look, on the bottom. And it should all just fit nicely. Because what we're going to do then is we're going to attach this together. When we do our second side seam, we'll attach that together at the same time so that it looks like it's a continuous run. And if we pull out the bits of fur at that point, I think it should almost be invisible like it was on Florin's jacket, the way that we managed with that. But I think if you try and do it when you've already sewn both side seams, you're going to have a bump where you're you're joining the two bits of fur together because you're gonna have to turn one under or try and put them up together so that there's no gap. And I think this way it'll just be caught in the in the side seam and I think that will do a good enough job um, in order to, to sew that together. And we haven't got a centre back seam, otherwise I'd use a centre back seam, but we'll just use the, the side seam for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, pin all of this on and then I'll come back to you for the next step. Before you get too carried away with um, pinning that on, don't forget you do need to zigzag down the side of your skirt. So I've just stopped before I got to that seam and I'll just zigzag down that seam now. Push that seam towards the back and then I'll carry and then my and then fold my hem over and then carry on um, attaching the, the um, just pinning on my fur trim. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, so once you've got your fur trim on all the way round, Okay, then I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine now and I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch over the edge like we did with Florence. Jack, I keep pointing up there because Florence sat in up there. Um, but across here, as we did with, so you're making sure that you're going into the fur mesh, keep your fur pile out of the way so you can see the edge and that's going to then just cover that um, folded edge as well of the skirt and that's just going to hold that on just nicely. And then when we finish doing that, we're just going to go back um, and just make sure we expose the mesh edge at the top here and then sew that, that edge as well. Okay, so let's get on with this. And it's much better with the white thread as well because you can actually see so much more easily where you're actually, or sorry, we won't be able to see, will we, quite so much of the stitching when we come in to just work that through. So just use your awl or your quick unpick just to hold your fur pile out of the way to make sure that you're stitching over the edge. And I'm using a slightly deeper um, stitch width on this just to hold this in place so I can be sure that we're catching it nicely. Just do a little bit and then just fold the fur pile back again so you can see where you're going. Make sure the mesh edge is lining up with the edge of your skirt. And 
and just keep doing that all the way along. So this is what it looks like when we've got the first go round. So it's quite messy on that edge, but remember that we can use the that little technique using our quick and pick, and we just pull out the fibres of fur from in between the stitches that we've just just sewn. And if we just take our time and just be really careful and don't go through any of the stitches themselves, we can lift out that edge of fur, because you might not have seen florins, when we, because we did this a lot with florins to working with the mesh, um, with the faux fur. And if, you, if you've not cut faux fur before and you need to have a reminder of how to do that, then I have done a little skill builder video, just a quick short four minute one. And that one just shows you how to use your quick and how to cut through the mesh and not and to leave the pile intact so just take your time and you just go through it like this and eventually you'll get as much as you can it'll hide those stitches and give it a really nice soft edge but you do have to just um, take your time with it and just ruffle it all up over those zigzag edges just like this okay so now we're going to go back in again and now this is so this is a straight piece there's no curve on this so we're going to do exactly the same thing but we're going to now do the same stitch but attach it at the top of this point just here so i'm going to do the same zigzag stitch on here and i think for this one i am going to take my stitch length down to the 2.5 but my stitch length is still a two i think i got it on five previously and now we're going to just sew over the edge of this one and if i use my awl again hiding under my machine we can hold that flat and then we can just make sure that we get to the end of edge of the fur the mesh on the back of the fur just to be able to sew that on and if you feel more comfortable then by all means just use your pins just pin it back down again if you're just moving the pile out of the way you're not trying to move the actual mesh of the fur you want to keep that flat against the skirt and i've got my press the foot down my needle in the work for when i stop so that i can just control that just that little bit better and hold it in place okay i'll come back to you when i finish doing that so if anybody was interested that's the amount of overhang of fur i had left over at the end can you remember i measured it out before we started and then there's the band of the hem quite nice and neat but with those zigzag stitches on there so now we can just do the same thing we've done before with the mesh and just snip through Use our scissors to part through the fibres of the fur and just snip this edge off just here. Just flush with the edge of the skirt. You can save that little bit if you want to or you can just throw it, depends on if you think you've got to use for it. And then what I would do now is go to this side seam here and match up the under the arms, again in the, the cuff of the sleeve first. Then the underarm point, and that one matches nicely, unlike the other one. Don't know what to do with the other one. And then the waist seam, we want that tier to match up at the right place. And I'm folding the seam allowances for the skirt up it towards the bodice. Oops, put in there. And then again, same thing again. Just putting that bit together. And then I'm going to smooth the fur out of the way so we retain as much pile as possible on this end. Let me just get rid of these um, ends of the stitching threads from before. So just smooth those down out of the way so that we can pull that out when we've stitched sewn the seam and then make sure your hem edges are, are equal. And put a pin in through the fur just to hold that together. Then we're gonna start here, down here, reverse stitch there, pivot here, and then go all the way down to the hem edge. And then I'm gonna do the uh, same thing in terms of neatening that. So back onto a straight stitch, construction length, and I want my needle position in position number seven. Just remembering all your settings all the time, just to take you back in a, into where you were. And then I need my needle in my work, so before I stop. Make sure you've got your other part of the dress out of the way. 
take it steady into that underarm point. Go up there, and then stop, and then pivot. And then we'll start going down this way. Just to make sure your raw edges are together. And just use the normal or something just to push the fibres of the fur into your seam so that inside that when you come down to sew over the fur we can retain as much of that fluffiness as possible because that's what's going to hide and disguise where the join in the fur is. Reverse it at the end. So there we've got that one. We need to snip in that underarm again, don't we, if you remember? Just snip through there. Because that just releases that to allow that to open. And now I'm just going to zigzag down this seam just to neaten that edge as well. Back onto my zigzag. Open up the side seam whilst you go over it the underarm point, just pull it straight. I just reversed at the end there just to neaten that off. Okay, so what we can do now, we've, un we've snipped under that underarm and that's what I meant when you went, because you've got this snip we can just pull it open and just sew straight down. You don't want to, don't need to pivot at that underarm point again. So we can turn this dress around. Sleeve around first and then down to the bottom there once we've pulled that fur out I think you won't really be able to see that. The only thing I might do is just put a couple of stitches in just to hold that seam allowance flat because I don't want you to be able to see where the join is so I think I will do that and we'll have to do it. I want it towards the back if that's the right way. So this is just neatening up really. I just want the stitches just to go Take it off your zigzag, Claire. And it's mainly just at the hem, really, where you need that to be flattened down. Just be careful when you're cutting you through your thread, you're not going to cut off any of your pile of your dress. So you want that all to be nice. And then you can see where it's flattened there, look. If you just take your quick and pick, you can just pull out those fibres from that seam. Just do it gently. And just by just going down it repeatedly. It'll just fluff it up for you. And just get those bits out of there. Don't want them higher up than we need. So that's come out now, that's it. So now I don't think you'd be able, apart from that piece of thread. I don't think you'd be able to see really where that join is once that's all smoothed down. So then all that needs to happen, well, not all that, ha <laughs> I'll say the next step rather than all that needs to happen, is you need to now just go through and take your time just to take all of this fur out of this edge here. And also the trim for the skirt doesn't go around the bottom, does it? No, it doesn't go around the hem. So we can just use our quick and pick as well to fluff up where the zigzag was on the end, on, the, this edge as well, the skirt edge of the, rather than the hem edge, and that will just fluff up all those fibres as well and just make sure that that fur then just looks really luxurious just around the bottom of the, of the hem there. So just use your quick and pick and just pull out those fibres. You will get some in your, in your throat and stick into your face and what have you, so make sure you've got a, a, either a glass of um, water handy or if you're asthmatic or prone to any irritation, I would suggest you wear a COVID face mask or something like that, just to be able to stop the fibres from getting into your airway. But you might not be talking, I'm talking all the time, aren't I? A bit of a, a gobble, a gobble, chatterbox, that's the word I wanted. Um, and so therefore, you know, I know I do get these fibres into my throat, and they, but they do irritate, so you do need to know that. Okay, so that's the bit with the skirt. The next thing then that I'm going to do with mine is I don't like it when the seam allowance on the, on the sleeves stick up. So what I'm going to do is just open that out. No, I've zigzagged it, so push it to one side, so I'll push it to the back 
and then we're on a straight stitch again and then I'm just going to go from the inside of the sleeve and I'm just going to go on the seam allowance I'm just going to stitch that down with a couple of stitches and it'll stop it from poking out and do that on both sides. And we're nearly finished. There's our sleeve just nice and flat there, look on the end. Just much, much nicer, just much neater. So I get the fur sorted out. We've zigzagged in the inside and we're going to put a little press stud just at the back here. And I'm gonna use a silver one, I think, rather than, um, I think I've got a couple of black ones in my haberdashery pack, but I haven't got a silver one, so I'm just gonna use a silver one to put that down. I don't want to put a black one on it. And then what I need to do with mine is I need to um, sew on my trim. So I'm going to do that in a second. So if, if you've finished with the dress, once you've put your prestard on the back, that's everything you need to do and pulled your fur out. That's your dress all finished for um, your Mary. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand just do a, an extra um, step on here. And I'm just going to show you how I'm going to hand sew my diamantes onto my dress. Um, because if you've bought a trim, then you'll need to know how to do that. Um, and I'm also going to pull out the fur on here and put my press hood on. And then we'll be, all be at the same place and I can do a bit of a roundup. Okay, so for those, let me just move this. So for those that are using the trim, what I've found is that you can actually cut it with your scissors. So don't use your best scissors. Use an old pair of scissors or kitchen scissors or whatever. I've got, I've got these old snips here that I'm, oh no, I've got some paper scissors here that I'm less bothered about. And if you look, I can just go through between the diamantes and then I can then just snip and it'll just, just come across. Okay, like that. So what I'm going to then do is I've got a needle threaded with um, just a white thread and I've only got it single because I only want it to be really, um, really thin. And we need my glasses as well just because we're working with something really thin and small and so the first thing that we're going to do is on the edge of the sleeves so find the edge of your diamante and before we start let's just bury our threads I'm just going to go in where I took that seam down and I'm going to use the edge of the not the very edge but about a half centimeter up so like the sewn edge um, of my sleeve hem edge as being my line to follow and just do a couple of stitches just to just to secure your thread in place then what you want to do is just take a stitch over the very first piece of diamante so you lie it so that it's lying correctly and you want your piece of thread just to go through and just get a stitch hold on one second so you're holding, holding the diamante down with your fingernail, or I am, and then I've got a stitch that's just going to sit just in between that first diamante and hold it in place. And we can do a couple because that's the edge. Oh, long piece of thread. So just make sure that you've, so I kind of push, push it through between the two places before I take my stitch. And then if you're careful, you can just hold that in place. That's got that anchored on now. So I'm not going to go in between each one, but probably every second piece of diamante, I'm going to travel up a little way on the hem of the sleeve. And then I'm going to make sure that my thread goes in between the diamantes, and then I'll hold it in place. And then I'll take a stitch just there. This is going to be a long job, so you know it's not. If this isn't the way to do it, if you want it to be quick, but it depends if you like the effect or not. And then I'm going to take another stitch from where I was just stitching, and just come out a little bit further on. So I'm I'm travelling un underneath and behind the row of stitches along the hem because there's my thread coming out, and here's my diamante but then I lay the diamante down on the line I'm following, which in this case is the stitched hem. Then I put my thread in between the diamante pieces and just do a second stitch just to hold it in place. That's 
it, holding it in place. And you can get, can get wider than this diamante strip. I couldn't in Spain, but you can generally. Just keep it. It's going to get tangled every now and again on your longer strip, but you should be able to just loosen that off and hold it in place. And then again, where you've come out, wrap the thread in between your diamantes to hold it flat. And then just take a second stitch, just holding that in place. So you're almost like kind of finishing it off where, where you are really with that thread. Probably I ought to have had a, a shorter piece of thread. It might, I think that's what my problem is with this. So pull that nice and tight. And the stitches will be invisible on the diamond on the string of diamante the chain if you like but it will just look almost look like it's invisibly held so that's how it's looking look it that that bit there is all kind of fixed on and nice and secure so again between those diamantes and just take an extra stitch holds it in place I'm going to travel along the hem a little bit more. Then line my diamante up with where I want it to be and then put the thread between the diamantes. And take a second stitch in place where we are there. That'll just hold that all together. And this is what I'm going to do. So I'm only going to show you a little bit because it, the, 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 the um, process is just going to be the same all the way along. But that's going to just fix that trim on. And if you wanted to go round again, I would go round the first time. And then if you wanted a second row just to be right next to it, I would just do the same thing. But perhaps go across both of them um, and just see what kind of look you like, how sparkly you want it all to be and um, catching the light. But that will be the way that I would try put it on. You could try stitching it onto a length of ribbon first and then cut it off. But again, you're doubling your work. So um, I think I'm just going to carry on just stitching mine like this. But it's one of those jobs. I think it's going to look really nice once it's done. Um, and I just need to take my time with it and, and get it all secured in place. So I'm going to do all of that. And I'm going to sew my press stud on the centre back of the neckline there as well. I'm going to put diamantes wherever I want it to be because obviously we can choose with that. Um, but if you've been putting the rest of yours elsewhere, then, then you'll be done. So I'm, I'm not going to do the round up until I finish mine and then I can show you and try it on to Mary um, because I'm, we'll be at the right place. So join me several hours later of sewing diamante on, which I might end up regretting. Um, but hopefully not, and hopefully it'll look lovely. Okay, speak to you soon. Hello everybody, it's several hours later after stitching on that um, diamante trim. Um, and I have to say, it did take quite a while. Um, and it was a little bit fiddly as well, but once you got into a rhythm, then it wasn't too bad. And this is my completed merry outfit. So I, instead of using the, um, where is it, the heat attaching trim, which I've put somewhere here. Hold on one second, sorry. Instead of using the heat attaching trim, then I've done the little diamante along the hem of the fur there, on the sleeves and around the neckline. And then I had some crystals in my, just in my button stash from other outfits. And I just done a little motif on the front there just by stitching those on. So you can just see those stitched on just there. Got a little bit of thread there or something. Looked like it, didn't it? So that, that's... That's how she's turned out. The dress fits nicely at the back, just with a little press stud, which I've just sewn on there. Um, there's plenty of room in the bodice. The sleeves have come out the right length as well, which is great. Um, the only thing is that kind of when she stands, you can just see her feet. And I'm not sure how keen I am on the length of the feet, but then I know that's a design style anyway. And then when she sits down, her feet do poke out. So I might look at doing some sort of um, little slippers or something, but I'll see what we've got left of the felt when we do the wings because I'll do the wings and the halo next and that'll hopefully hold her ears up because they've got a tendency to just to tip back at the moment. But I'm really pleased. I think the dress has got a lovely fullness to it. Um, so that looks really nice and, and luxurious on there. Um, the fur has has come up nicely as well. Um, yeah, and I just think it's it's a nice little sweet little outfit. 
So next one is the wings and the halo. So that's what I'll be working on next for our little Mary. Um, and then hope, and then I'll see about her shoes at some stage. Whether whether I I might not delay the video for her wings and a halo just in favour of some shoes. I might just do a little picture or something to say what I've done with those eventually. We'll see what happens. Um, but for now, yeah, I get on with the thing. So. Happy stitching everybody. I hope you've enjoyed watching this one with me. If you're not a subscriber already then please do consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate to know that you're there if you've been what Mary's watching me, isn't he? Uh, if you've enjoyed the videos at all and found some some um the tips and tricks um useful to you. Um yeah, and I'll see you all soon. So have a great day everybody. Happy stitching and see you soon. Bye.